So, as you can probably tell from the title, we're reading a truly hellacious book today. Um, is your nose open? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> uh, no, it's, that's how it always looks. Like. There's nothing like in your nose. Uh, no. <laughs> it almost looked like you had like dried blood in your nose. Uh, no. No, I don't. No, no. It's probably just visions. Again. Just having yeah. visions here. Yeah. yeah, right. So, yeah, no. So anyway. Confirm there's no blood in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> You're already having like the mind yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I say, we're touching something kind of different in a way. I mean, different or not so different. That's kind of the social experiment of this video. I really think that this is just going to be, if you take the other stuff we've read, Schlichter, yeah. Ben Shapiro, all of it, that is like the diluted version, yeah. whereas this is just raw alcohol. Yes. Like, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this will kill you. Yeah. This, this will yeah. kill you. Yeah. Like, this is a batch of old pops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From, the, from the hills. Ben Probably. Shapiro will give you a nasty hangover, and mm. this will fucking yeah. this kill you. Rock this will This will Cut a hole straight through you. Yeah, I think what we'll probably be most surprised at is how familiar it all is, how unsurprising a lot of it actually turns out to be. Obviously, many of you are probably wondering who the author of this book is. You might not have ever heard of the guy because he thankfully has been dead for quite mm. some time. But yeah, we can be happy about that at least. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry, I've got you covered like we did with Kurt. I've got a, you know, backstory. The so yeah, if you don't know who he is, then we're going to spoil that yeah. thing right now. <laughs> You know, ruin your life yeah. yet again. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, basically, you know, to cut right to the meat of it, basically this book is considered one of the most dangerous books ever written. Some people credit it with being involved in hundreds of terrorist attacks, murders, carried out by neo-Nazis, and that was very much the intention of its author. He wanted to inspire people to commit terrorist acts and just general acts of violence. This is, of course, The Turner Diaries. Even if you don't think you've heard of it, you probably actually have because of its connection to the Oklahoma City bombing in which the FBI building there was attacked with a powerful explosive in an attack that was directly inspired by this book. Uh, we will probably cover that today. There is a scene in which the attack, as it went on to happen, is effectively planned and executed in the exact same fashion in this book. And so, yeah, really, you know, the purpose of reading so, yeah, obviously I know some people have concerns about us covering this book because of its nature. Partly what we're doing today is, you know, we want to find out how much that reputation is created in the mind, as well as really, more importantly, we want to kind of trace the lineage of all the other books that we've been reading on the channel. You might think that Ben Shapiro is a million miles away from William Luther Pierce, but I think really they are all part of the same ecosystem, they all swim in the same waters, and I think in a very real sense a lot of the books that we've read owe their existence in a way to this book and to its sort of enduring notoriety, notoriety yeah. and reverence with which it's yeah. held by neo-Nazis to this day. I feel like Atlas Shrugged is the book that they all <laughs> reference, they all talk yeah, about. It's the one we're all built <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. But <laughs> Mitt Romney said, didn't he, that he yeah. basically won't employ anyone on his staff who hasn't read Atlas Shrugged. That's a deal breaker. Yeah. Whereas I do feel that this book is the one that they really mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Atlas Shrugged yeah. It seems like that's what they will say in public, yeah. whereas in private, I think they're more into this sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. You know I, mean? I think, I think in a way, like obviously, yeah, like Atlas Shrugged is obviously very much the face of like the neocon, mm. whereas the Turner Diaries is the more open neo-Nazi. Yes, certainly like the, the MAGA movement and all of yeah, that. Its yeah. influence is pretty, yes. pretty clear. You touched on it earlier, but I feel like it's infamy notoriety. I am really interested to see how much of that is true because I, I understand like when people have issues with us reading this. Yeah. I do get that. I am really interested to see, and I really do suspect at this point, that when you actually come to read it, it's just going to be poorly written, stupid, <laughs> garbage 
bullshit <laughs> just like all the other shit yes. we've read and that I think is why it's important for us to read it. Yes. Obviously we may turn out to be wrong. Yeah, there, I think this book more than any other, we pledge from the beginning that we would always finish the books that we start. This one has the caveat that we can opt out at any point. Yes. We might decide yeah. as we start this not to finish it. I know how heinous it can get at points. Genuinely the worst things that we will have ever read. Just purely because of the fact that he is not not even vaguely mm. attempting to hide the true heart of the ideology. Yeah, in pretty much all of the other books that we've read, there are mask off moments. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with this, I don't think there was ever a mask in the first place because no. the man is like a raving lunatic. Yes. So, <laughs> was thankfully he's fucking yeah. dead now. Yeah. He's like a fucking doom preacher on the fucking street yeah, corner exactly. with a tinfoil hat on, just raving about Jews. You know what yeah. I mean? So exactly. Yeah. So yeah, basically our hope with these videos really is we want to dispel the illusion of the Turner Diary and of William Luther Pierce. He is no better than the others. Yeah. He doesn't get to be given the exemption yeah. because he shouldn't he's be lauded. too dangerous or too threatening yeah. that we have to seal it away like the Ark of the Covenant <laughs> at the end of Indiana Jones. This is not a serious man. He is every bit as insecure, petty and shallow mm. as all the others. He ignorant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With naught but shit. <laughs> so really, yeah, our hope is that we will really just take a big fat shit all over William Luther Pierce and have a good laugh while we're doing it because yeah. the, the reality is obviously is Kurt was probably the most sort of enraging one that we've had so far just because of the non-stop nature of it. This will be very much the same but I think in a way like what you're going to see is just how absurd the beliefs are when packaged in a dog shit novel <laughs> written by a pompous self-important prick who thinks he's the smartest cunt who ever lived. I think really what we're going to see here is we're going to get a greatest hits of the blind drunk oeuvre. <laughs> we're going to see all the old chestnuts rearing yeah. their, their ugly little heads in the most pathetic, idiotic way possible. But we might be wrong and if we are, we <laughs> will prostrate ourselves before the the YouTube comment section <laughs> apologise. Let's find out together as we dive into William Luther Pierce's The Turner Diaries. Is it too late to change my mind? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's our justification for this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just want to take a moment as well here at the beginning of the video. We usually use to leave this to the end, which is obviously like the worst way of possibly doing it. But if you like the videos, do like them. Uh, do comment for the YouTube algorithm, uh, it does help us out. And if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. We have tons of these videos now and, you know, plenty more to come. So fucking do it, you yeah. fucking useless, worthless fucking scrub. <laughs> <laughs> check out the Patreon and, of course, check out our bookstores oh, on yeah. Amazon and uh, Gumroad. Thanks to everyone who has bought them so far and for everyone who's left a review and mm -hmm. kind words. And we really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. That I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. So you that's the these are nice and strong, I can imagine that, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think we're going to need it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's uh, shit our pants, dive in and swim. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like I say, um, obviously I appreciate that probably a lot of people, even if you've heard of the Turner Diaries, even if you've heard of William Luther Pierce, you might not really know anything about him. And I figured it would just be interesting to take a little trip down memory lane. We're going to go back to the good old days of the American Nazi party. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have a nice little uh, little history lesson. A yeah, basically, goose step down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically, who is William Luther Pierce? Where did he come from? Where did he go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, these well, these drinks are strong. Aren't they, they are. <laughs> Today we're reading The Turner Diaries, written by William Luther Pierce, although he did write the book under a pseudonym, because he's bitch made like that. <laughs> uh, preferred title, obviously, he liked to be referred to as Dr. William Luther Pierce, the third. Um, or as I prefer to call him, Mr. William Luther Pierce. <laughs> he, uh, he actually insisted on being called Dr. Pierce at all times as a, as a show of respect. So I think the least we can do is, is not uh, do that. insist on calling him Mr. Pierce instead. <laughs> so he was a, a physicist. He worked as a teacher and a scientist. And of course, again, just like with a lot of these sorts of people, implied that that training gave him some sort of expertise in 
uh, completely unrelated <laughs> fields uh, like biology and anthropology and sociology. Yeah. Things he knew less than nothing about. Does that we, remind you of it? <laughs> yeah, as we see with so many others. But of course he was most famous for being a wretch and a neo-Nazi. <laughs> um, so <Sort> noted wretch, <laughs> Dr. William. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. So yeah, let's start at the beginning. He was born in 1933 in the great state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. He was a Georgia boy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So also, a uh, nice little juicy bit of Pierce law. His great-great-grandfather was a man by the name of Thomas H. Watts. He served as both the governor of Alabama and the attorney general under Jefferson Davis in the Confederacy. Oh! <laughs> so, yeah. Wow! Which really just goes to show that Mr. Pierce actually comes from a long line of worthless racism. Yeah. <laughs> he inherited those yeah. pathetic, worthless Confederacy. Yeah. <laughs> he went on to attend a military academy, during which time he could best be described as, quote, a fucking dork. <laughs> I'll show a picture of him here, and I'm sure you will agree with that estimation. So he's got there's a bit of bit of the Kurt shadows oh, of yeah. Schlichter. <laughs> <laughs> the sort of, you know, the military man persona that is obviously, you know, essentially fraudulent. Yeah. Like I say, he began his career as a teacher during the 50s and 60s, of course, during which time saw the rise of the hippie counterculture mm. stuff, obviously protest against the war in Vietnam, which became a huge focal point politically in America at the time, as well as, obviously, the black civil rights movement. All sentiments that Pierce was confidently able to blame on... The Jews. <laughs> uh, of course uh, he did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No need for any evidence or no. further explanation, apparently, from the uh, learned man of science. Don't, <laughs> the Don't think about it. Head empty. <laughs> Jews did it. Well, I wish I could have had a teacher like him. Funny little tidbit here. Uh, around the same time here, he actually resigned from the ultra-conservative far-right John Birch Society because, in his opinion, it simply was not racist enough. <laughs> was too woke. Yeah, the oh. John Birch Society was too woke for Mr. William Luther. <laughs> so, in 1966, he moved to Washington, D.C. Mr. Pierce goes to <laughs> <laughs> And he quickly became an associate of a man by the name of George Lincoln Rockwell, a man probably best described as an anal fistula in human form. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rockwell was a former Navy pilot. He served in World War II and Korea, though somehow never quite found time amidst all that action to actually see any combat. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that. But Thank God. He did, however, somehow manage to make time to found the American Nazi Party. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. So he obviously had bigger priorities. Of course. During World yeah. War Two. Well, he couldn't be <laughs> fighting the Nazis, could he, while he was he very had a Nazi busy. Party <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He fought in World War Two. Which side did he fight on he in did, World War Two? He didn't fight. Oh, he didn't. Of course he didn't. Yeah. yeah. He was a conscientious objector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the fun doesn't end there, because Rockwell would later go on to be hilariously shot to death by one of his own followers, leading to the splintering of the group and the founding of Mr. Pierce's own National Alliance. Excellent. Um, well, at least he got shot to death. Yeah. A hilarious little story here in the fallout from Rockwell's murder. His own father, after he was shot to death, expressed absolutely no surprise that his son had been killed. And at the funeral, the cemetery themselves said they would not tolerate any displays of Nazi regalia or flags. And so when when a group of like about 50 odd Nazis turned up at the funeral to see off their fallen fury. <laughs> fury yeah. They turned up with swastikas and flags and everything, and there was a standoff where they blocked the, the Nazis <laughs> into the cemetery, and so the road was actually blocked into the cemetery and the hearse pulled up with his body in it as that was happening and got stuck on a level crossing, a railroad crossing, <laughs> because there was all these Nazis <laughs> <laughs> and it narrowly avoided Aww. being struck by a train. <laughs> That's a funny story, but <laughs> what a shame. I, know, I had shame, to tell yeah. the story, I had to tell it just because of how funny it, it almost was. Amazing, um, like, it would have been their fault. Like, yeah, they, they, they nearly got his corpse <laughs> mulched by a fucking train. Yeah. That's a hell of a send-off, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all agree the send-off he deserved. <laughs> um, it certainly would have been almost as funny as the shooting that took his life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, it would have been amazing if he'd have actually survived the shooting. Yeah. You know, it's happened, didn't it, where yeah. people are in a condition where they are actually pronounced dead, yeah. and they're not, and, and, just and, love, yeah. and they just get very sl- Yeah, just as he sits up in the car and he looks to his right, and the last thing he sees yeah. is the he, fucking he, three he turns and <laughs> makes eye contact with all of his Nazi followers, <laughs> and then gets wiped out by a fucking freight train. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, of course, since Rockwell's disastrous life and death, he has been cited favourably by a number of right-wing fecal impactions, <laughs> including David Duke and Richard Spencer, oh, both of whom, of course, notoriously support Donald Trump and other neo-Nazi Republican candidates, which is really weird. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that. I would never do. expect, no. you know, shit to float like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting, the differences. I suppose the military part of it is one thing, you know. But that kind of has faded out, you know, you don't see Trump dressing up as a, as a general just I yet. cannot <laughs> wait for that. Oh yeah, his, Imagine uh, that the really ill fitting. <laughs> 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 it's, yeah. it's really ill fitting general yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just all like bits well, and pieces. It would just be the same, one. like the suit, the huge yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. It would just be green and the hat. <laughs> Medal is all over him, just clinking about wherever he goes. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, ends up inverted in Milan. <laughs> <laughs> in a less than advantageous <laughs> position, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, fun fact about uh, uh, Rockwell's uh, shooter, uh, like I say, he was a, a, an ex-member of the American Nazi party, he'd actually been thrown out. He was actually a Greek man whose name was John Patsalos, and he had changed his name to John Patler in order for it to sound more like the name <laughs> <laughs> Like I say, recently kicked out of the American Nazi Party, the reason for which was, quote, his Bolshevik leanings. Bolshevik <laughs> leanings? A member of the American Nazi yeah, Party yeah, has he was kicked out of Bolshevik, Bolshevik yeah. leanings. Um, which I think really goes to show that Rockwell and his American Nazi Party never fully understood the adage, go woke, go back. <laughs> No, I think really the, the through line here in all of this is that John Burke Society, too woke. Mm. American Nazi Party, too woke. <laughs> it's like, it's Bud Light. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to get Kid Rock to yeah, uh, shoot, shoot the American Nazi Party. <laughs> Pat Salas was kind of similar in a way, reading about him, it really reminded me of Elliot Rodger. He said that he joined the Nazis because, quote, I thought I was inferior. Also saying that he believed himself to be dark and ugly. This is something that Elliot Rodger spoke about in his online stuff. So he was a target of that racism who internalised the racism and then hated himself for it. Later on, after a jury gave him the lightest possible sentence... (laughs) (laughs) You've got to love trial by jury. (laughs) They do give some fucking yeah, 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 results yeah, from time to time. Yeah. From time, to time yeah. He went on to renounce his Nazi past. He is now reportedly a vocal supporter of Donald Trump, though. So, you know, they can't all be winners. <laughs> <laughs> that is the trouble, I feel, with people. And I understand why we do this, but like you, you get a lot of this sort of... Someone who's a former Nazi, yeah. for example, will be given this, like, on yeah. the left, will be given this yeah. elevated yeah. platform. It's like, no, 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 you shut up. Yeah. This guy this used guy to be a Nazi. Yeah, so being a Nazi yeah. and no longer being a Nazi, right, that means you're, okay, you're slightly fewer steps behind the rest yeah. of us. You're now. better than it, you were yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. it doesn't mean that you have this knowledge yeah. that, oh, we all can't have this. Yeah. We were never a Nazi. It's like, no, they're still going to be problematic, yeah. aren't they? They're I'm, still I'm gonna pretty hold... sure black people still have a better understanding of the racialized experience of living in America mm. than a former neo-Nazi yes. does. That's not to say we shouldn't convert people, mm. but... Yeah, I think it says a lot if your priority mm. in life is neo-Nazis. We're all on a journey. Yeah. Uh, those people are on uh, one hell of a journey. <laughs> so, yeah. Pigeons. Uh, yeah. Those yeah. pigeons are fighting, man. Like, they're getting yeah. quite high on them. Oh, yeah, shit. They're, they're, yeah. God. Yeah, they're squaring off. They really are, yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> They both just went off a roof. Yep. <laughs> Jesus. So anyway, back to Mr. Pierce. Oh yeah, <laughs> forgot about him. Yeah, we got a little off track. Like I say, after the American Arts Party 
dissolved. Two groups came out of that. A lot of infighting. The group we are interested in at the moment is Mr. Pierce's <laughs> National Alliance. It started as a sort of youth organisation that was actually partly funded by a senator. It was essentially started as like a sort of campaign group for him, but Pierce obviously had very little intention of actually running it. <laughs> that. There seemed to have been sort of some allegations of, you know, embezzlement or sort of deception. Mm. It was essentially Pierce's attempt at like a Hitler yeah. youth organisation. Yeah. That all fell apart and it basically just became an openly Nazi organisation. Although he actually hated the term neo-Nazi because while he loved Hitler, he hated the idea that he was being covertly accused of copying the Nazis. <laughs> and he's like, no, this is all my idea. No, I'm not copying. <laughs> yeah, of course These are all yeah, Race-based fascism is yeah. completely <laughs> my idea. Very Fuck original, Mr. Pierce. Very, very original. After the complete collapse of all of that, all of his little shenanigans and Rockwell's very, very funny murder, <laughs> um, he moved the National Alliance headquarters to a West Virginia compound, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose he was trying to escape those rich men. <laughs> From where he spread his anti-Semitic racist worldview through radio programs, public access television, and even a record company. Which actually also published a video game where you play as a clansman and murder stereotypes of various ethnic minorities. Um, yep. okay. Fucking hell. Which was followed by a sequel named White Law, in which the players assume- listen to this, this is fucking unreal. In which the players assume the role of an Irish American police officer, quote, taking up arms to protect his territory from racial minorities, which oh. apparently is inspired by the Turner Diaries as well, so we might be getting to some of that. Although it sounds more to me like fucking True Allegiance. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Unbelievable. Ben's such a fucking weird one, like being Jewish mm. and also being deeply submerged in the oily blackness of neo-Nazi rhetoric. <laughs> Obviously he's a grifter, but it's just like, how much of this is you just tolerating what you must know to be the anti-Semitism of your people? Peers. And how much of it is just you being an actual anti-Semite at this point? What I would really like to see, actually, you remember that video of Ben Shapiro talking to Dave Rubin? They're talking, and obviously they're, you know, friends. Yeah. And Ben Shapiro literally says to Dave Rubin when he says, like, you know, if I had an engagement party, say, with my husband or my fiance, you know, yeah. uh, you know, you, you guys would come. And Ben Shapiro was literally just like, mm, no, I, I don't think I would. Yeah. You know, he's like, no, I, I wouldn't come to your engagement because it's against my beliefs, and, yeah. and you know, he tries to sort of couch it, yeah. but you can see <laughs> Dave Rubin was just not expecting yeah. him to yeah. say it. And it's like, yeah, Dave, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guess what? Fascists yeah. don't like anyone. Yeah, fascists don't have friends. Yeah, exactly. Now, I cannot wait to see a video where Ben Shapiro yeah. is being told by one of his little fucking yeah. Nazi heroes that, no, Ben, I would not come to your son's bar mitzvah yeah. because I hate Jews. Yeah, because I think Jews should be eradicated. Yeah, and Ben to be like, what? Oh, that's okay. That's yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Jabbing himself in the yeah. leg with a fork. <laughs> Biting down on his own tongue. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I need to go buy a plank of wood and fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing drier than his wife. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> the highlight of his miserable fucking life was undoubtedly inspiring two pairs of shit stained clown shoes to carry out the Oklahoma City bombing, which killed 168 people and injured 680 more. The inspiration and basis for which can be found in this very book. So that should be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm very looking forward yeah, to reading this. That's the bit we were looking forward to. Pierce would actually go on to criticise the bombing, saying that it was too small scale and attack. Of course. Of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. Of fucking course. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, the American Nazi party is too woke. Yeah. And the Oklahoma bombing wasn't fucking bomby enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. It's just like, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah. yeah, he thought it was too small scale and he really believed that it should have been only one part of a wider long-term campaign of bombings and assassinations, none of which he himself was ever willing to plan on mm. taking. I guess he was too busy writing shit books that mm. weekend. So for quite some time he was attempting to secure tax exempt status for the National Alliance. He falsely called the neo-Nazi group an educational organisation and uh, he then subsequently failed to secure himself the tax exempt status that he wanted. After which he would eventually go on, completely coincidentally of course, to found the so-called 
Cosmotheist Community Church. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> a uh, church which both the Anti-Defamation League and the Southern Poverty Law Centre both agree was almost certainly a scam <laughs> to finally gain the favourable tax status from the IRS, which he uh, did eventually attain in 1986. A Nazi feigning religious sentiment for financial gain. Colour me shut <laughs> Mr. Pierce was married a total number of five times in his life, fathering two children, one of whom, his son, has gone on to publicly renounce his father and expose his years of neglect, physical and emotional abuse. And despite his disdain for immigration of all kinds, Pierce would become oddly interested in marrying exclusively immigrant women. <laughs> his last three marriages, all being to Hungarian immigrants, one of which came about after Pierce placed an advert in a Hungarian women's magazine looking for international marriages. Um, and all of which were short, miserable, and served only to expose the man's many sad and abusive personal failings. Oh, goodness. So another trend we see is yes. emerging yeah. now. Uh, this obsession with marrying yeah. immigrant yeah. women. Like, it's just a, th they it's just a thing, isn't it? It's yeah. fucking, it's proper yeah. weird, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, and I think weird. a lot of people mistake it for hypocrisy, and it's not. It's that they're misogynists. Yeah and they see Western women as being fallen and decadent and they want traditional demure wives. fucking yes. so they go to yeah, so they want a yeah. poor woman who's yeah. basically just marrying them to survive so that they have a woman that will do anything they yeah. say. Yeah. Um, and obviously having them be an outsider in a new country yeah. is all the better to us. Of isolate. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the abuse fucking playbook, yeah, textbook, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like Nigel Farage spearheaded Brexit, and yet he's married to a German woman. And his kids are German, basically. It's like, what? what? So you're allowed to do it, but no one else is. Yeah. is and this? of course, oh, she's German. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. your kids are German, aren't yeah. they? This is the man who marched around country villages as a public schoolboy singing Hitler Youth songs. Oh, and he's he's gone off to Germany to marry. Him. Oh, that's weird. That. So all of that is really just to say that Mr. Pierce was undoubtedly one of the most influential American Nazis all the way up until his own sad and torrid death from cancer and renal failure in 2002, an event which I'm sure you will all agree can best be described as quote funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, that he didn't go far enough, like his entire nervous system should have just shut should down. Have left his body <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> at rapid speed. <laughs> The National Alliance, I'm happy to report, has since fallen into infighting, which is kind of ironic because that is a precisely how it came yeah. to be. And if there's one thing that Nazis love more than killing innocent people, it's killing each other. <laughs> one thing I would say, yeah, is that these views are spread across the world. You know, these sorts of organisations, they work to mm. spread this ideology and of course what we'll be reading today is one of Pierce's attempts to tuck this in to popular culture you know we heard Schlichter talking about Andrew Breitbart mm. and his brilliant advice about fighting the culture war and going yeah, out in yeah. the mainstream and writing these terrible books. Like this is clearly a huge touchstone for all of the books we've read. The Turner Diaries is like a keystone of the history of this kind of right-wing literature. The thriller novel mm. that's really just a vector for spreading right-wing ideology. Obviously yeah. Pierce wrote like, a second book called Hunter which is probably even more mask off in that it literally tells the story of a racist serial killer who is portrayed as the hero of the novel and which obviously Pierce hoped would be treated as a sort of how-to manual. It sounds like a fun book. Mm. Yeah, an attempted coup of Pierce's successor as the leader of the National Alliance eventually ended with a splinter group being formed which itself then imploded <laughs> when its leader, a prominent member of Pierce's inner circle, former co-host on their radio show and of course naturally an associate of the Ku Klux Klan, was arrested and pled guilty to possession of child pornography. Oh. In a turn of events that no doubt surprised not a single soul on earth, <laughs> his guilty plea was in fact to protect him from further charges of, quote, attempting to coerce a ten-year-old girl into a sexual relationship by sending her anonymous gifts, driving past her house, and writing lyrics to love songs declaring his desire to marry her. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's what the little girl said too. <laughs> At the sentence hearing, he proclaimed that he was, quote, not a paedophile, and was, in fact, the precise opposite. <laughs> Which is kind of an odd thing for a man who yeah. had just pled guilty to paedophilia to say. Yeah. He claimed that he was unwillingly in possession of child pornography. Unwillingly? 
Yeah. Because he had visited an online forum that had been, quote, flooded with spam. This man's ex-wife has also gone on to talk extensively about her time with the group and the endless paranoia and cruelty that defined its members, Pierce included, as well as the quite hilarious little tidbit that when the Turner Diaries actually came out, she read it and thought that it was rubbish <laughs> and told him that to his face. I bet he took that Yeah, well. he took it really well. So yeah, in regards to the National Alliance itself, overall it's got from a 2002 high of 2,500 paying members, 17 paid staff, and an annual income of $1 million, Jesus. to the 2012 low of fewer than 100 paying members <laughs> and a staff of just a single Nazi pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I hope that that gives some kind of insight into exactly what it is that we're about to subject you to. Basically, Pierce was an undeterred Nazi mm. uh, to his dying day. He abandoned his family, abandoned his children, abused everyone really he ever knew, all in pursuit of white supremacy and fascism in America, which even at its current levels apparently was not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, here we go, the Turner Diaries. Look how far we've fallen. So yeah, there's a, there's actually like a, a second cover in here that is just quite hilariously bad. <laughs> it's kind of hard to make out just because it's, it's quite poor quality, but there's like police officers like barging through an alleyway and we've got like our two heroes, I guess, who are armed to the teeth. It looks like they're sort of hiding, maybe ready to ambush the police. But there's a police car parked up. And it says, the Equality Police, written on it. It's like a Ben Garrison cartoon. Oh my <laughs> fucking god. Possibly even worse. The politically correct brigade. Yeah, so, like, I'm, I'm wondering if we're actually going to see that like in this, there's actually going to be like a PC brigade <laughs> that uh, starts shoving things down people's throats. Makes you think. Yeah, my head's still hurting from all the high level ideas mm. that flying through it. Black pill. Yeah, we're joining the National yeah. <laughs> We're founding our own yeah. National Alliance. And it's going to be even more child put on the <laughs> Okay, so... Are we ready to begin? <laughs> if this is just a part one and done, <laughs> you already know how far we really got with this thing. Okay, so here we go. I'll, uh, I'll start with the foreword. Oh, this is amazing. This is this in-universe foreword. So what? Like, yeah, oh, for yeah. fuck's sake. It was probably the main influence behind The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> 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 there exists such an extensive body of literature on the Great Revolution, including the memoirs of virtually every one of its leading figures who survived into the new era, that yet another book dealing with the events and circumstances of that time of cataclysmic upheaval and rebirth may seem superfluous. Indeed it does. <laughs> <laughs> Already, I'm, that is the word that is coming to mind. <laughs> The Turner Diaries, however, provides an insight into the background of the Great Revolution which is uniquely valuable for two reasons. One, it is a fairly detailed and continuous record of a portion of the struggle during the years immediately before the culmination of the revolution written as it happened on a day-to-day -day basis. Thus, it is free of the distortion which often afflicts hindsight. Although the diaries of other participants in that mighty conflict are extant, none which has yet been published provides as complete and detailed a record. Two. <laughs> oh my God. Got time for more. It is written from the viewpoint of a rank and file member of the organization, and although it consequently suffers from myopia occasionally, it is a totally frank document. I'm sure it does occasionally <laughs> suffer from myopia. Sure. Says the neo Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Unlike the accounts recorded by some of the leaders of the revolution, its author did not have one eye on his place in history as he wrote. <laughs> Holy fucking yawning. Jesus, Mr. Pierce. As we read the pages which follow, we get a better understanding than from any other source, probably, of the truth. <laughs> That's prob Maybe. I mean, I'm probably... <laughs> <sure. laughs> it's probably no... Don't even... You know what, actually? <laughs> Of the true thoughts and feelings of the men and women whose struggle and sacrifice saved our race in its time of greatest peril and brought about the new era. Is that this what I mean? Like her would be talking about they saved our nation and mm. our country, and our values. maybe our people mm. yeah, and our values. He would just actually use that mm. word. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> Earl Turner, who wrote these diaries, was born in. 
43BNE in Los Angeles, which was the name of a vast metropolitan area on the west coast of the North American continent in the old era, encompassing the present communities of Eckhartsville and Wesselton, as well as a great deal of the surrounding countryside. <laughs> So we've got some real, like, People's Republic level, yep. like, sci-fi America stuff, but Pierce really commits. I have heard some of where this book goes and stuff like that. I'm interested to see. He grew up in the Los Angeles area and was trained as an electrical engineer. After his education, he settled near the city of Washington which was then the capital of the United States. Does that sound like anyone else? He first became active in the organization in 12 BNE. When this record begins in 8 BNE, 1991, according to the old chronology, Turner was 35 years old and had no mate. <laughs> had no mate. mate. Wow, okay. <laughs> We're getting right into this now. Yeah, wow, okay. Being, you know, from England, I just felt like it had no mates. <laughs> it had no mates. Yeah. It's shocking that these right-wing dating sites just aren't very popular, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you'd, you'd think any woman would want to be someone's Yeah, why, why doesn't he just uh, put a personal ad in yeah. the <laughs> These diaries span barely two years in Earl Turner's life. <laughs> barely, yeah. Yeah, I know, it already feels oh. like it's been two years. Yeah, yeah, two years of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Yet they give us an intimate acquaintance with one of those whose name is inscribed in the record of martyrs. Mm. So maybe Turner doesn't see the promised land. <laughs> he becomes a suicide bomber. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I, I think he will, no, I, yeah. I said that kind of tongue in cheek, yeah. yeah. but I mean it. Turner's diaries consist, in their manuscript form, of five large cloth-bound ledgers, <laughs> completely filled, and a few pages at the beginning of a sixth. Mm. The ledgers were discovered last year, along with a wealth of other historically important material by the same team, which earlier uncovered the Eastern Command Center of the Revolution in its excavations near the Washington ruins. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some uh, Terminator shit going yes, on. Yes, yeah. 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 The fucking foot comes down. Yeah. Let's go. When was this written? Fitting that they now be made available for the general public during this, the 100th anniversary year of the Great Revolution. A.M. New Baltimore, April 100. <laughs> that was like the best way you could come up with it, like, a new yeah, calendar. Yeah. How do I tell them that there's a new calendar? April a million. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> Chapter 1. September 16th, 1991. Today it finally began. After all these years of talking and nothing but talking, we have finally taken our first action. We are at war with the system, and it is no longer a war of words. I cannot sleep, so I will try writing down some of the thoughts which are flying through my head. It is not safe to talk here. The walls are quite thin, and the neighbours might wonder at a late-night conference. Besides, George and Catherine are already asleep. Only Henry and I are still awake, and he's just staring at the ceiling. <laughs> Nazis, folks. <laughs> I'm really uptight. I am so jittery I can barely sit still. And I'm exhausted. I've been up since 5.30 this morning when George phoned and warned that the arrests had begun. Oh, and it's up um, no. <laughs> Oh, look, here was me hoping this was actually going to be exciting in any way. <laughs> yeah, see, this is just going to be, like, the worst thing we've ever yeah. read. It's, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, oh, guaranteed. Um, again, you've got to look at the people that the right hold up as their intellectuals. Ben Shapiro, yeah. Jordan, morons, yeah. Matt, Elon Matt Musk, Matt Walsh. <laughs> Matt Walsh. 
Yeah. Tucker Carlson. Yeah, exactly. Morons. Perverts and morons. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're, that's an intellectual term. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, this is just going to be another load of stupid fucking horseshit, yeah. you know? Now that we have begun, we must continue with the plan we have been developing so carefully ever since the gun raids two years ago. <laughs> Such organic storytelling. Oh, me. yeah, fuck. Oh, it. what can I say except <laughs> that I was born in 1950. <laughs> oh, two years ago, this happened. My good friend Gregory Manfield <laughs> was also born in Vegas. <sighs> what a blow that was to us, and how it shamed us. All that brave talk by patriots. The government will never take my guns away, and then nothing but meek submission when it happened. On the other hand, maybe we should be heartened by the fact that there were still so many of us who had guns then. Nearly 18 months after the Cohen Act had outlawed all private ownership of firearms in the United States. Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> Surprising no one. This is a former member of the American Nazi Party. It's not entirely familiar with some. <laughs> I'll never forget that terrible day. November 9th, 1989. They knocked on my door at five in the morning. I was completely unsuspecting as I got up to see who it was. I opened the door and four Negroes came pushing into the apartment before I could stop them. One was carrying a baseball bat and two had long kitchen knives thrust into their belts. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, this is like official. This is official. This is a gun raid in yeah. the Cohen Act. And yep. he's just got these ridiculous caricatures coming in with knives yeah. just hanging out of them. The bad guys from Death Wish yeah. they have turned yeah. up. Yeah. Jesus Christ. The one with the bat shoved me back into a corner and stood guard over me with his bat raised in a threatening position while the <laughs> other three began ransacking my apartment. <laughs> My first thought was that they were robbers. Robberies of this sort had become all too common since the Cohen Act, with groups of blacks forcing their way into white homes to rob and rape, knowing that even if their victims had guns, they probably would not dare use them. <laughs> So I turned my back to the wall and allowed myself to be raped as I upset the Jews somehow. Oh no. This is literally the first fucking Yeah, this is page this one. Is, yeah, this, this is gonna get This is going awful bad. places. Yeah. Probably the thing that shocked me the most is his restraint in not actually just using racial slurs. Yeah, not yet at least, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's plenty of time. Yeah. Then the one who was guarding me flashed some kind of card and informed me that he and his accomplice Accomplices were special deputies for the Northern Virginia Human Relations Council. I couldn't believe it. It just couldn't be happening. Then I saw that they were wearing strips of green cloth tied around their left arms. As they dumped the contents of drawers on the floor and pulled luggage from the closet, they were ignoring things that robbers wouldn't have passed up. My brand new electric razor, a valuable gold pocket watch, a milk bottle full of dimes. They were looking for firearms. Right after the Cohen Act was passed, all of us in the organisation had cashed our guns and ammunition where they weren't likely to be found. Deep with the <laughs> Those in my unit had carefully greased our <laughs> Those in my unit had carefully greased our weapons to seal them in an oil drum and spent all of one tedious weekend burying them, <laughs> burying the drum in an eight foot deep pit 200 miles away in the woods of western Pennsylvania. Yeah, they secreted those weapons deep in their oil drum, you know what I mean? But I had hidden my 357 Magnum revolver and 50 rounds of ammunition inside the door frame between the kitchen and the living room. By pulling out two loosened nails and removing one board from the door frame, I could get to my revolver in about two minutes flat if I ever needed it. I had timed myself. <laughs> two minutes is not a great <laughs> no. response time, bro. No, no. Two minutes? Like, yeah. fucking hell. I sealed it in concrete. Yeah. <laughs> in the I had timed myself. I could get it out in almost an hour. <laughs> These inexperienced blacks couldn't find it in a million years. Yeah, I feel we're going to have to apologise for, yeah, for this. Yeah, blanket apology for basically Yeah, there's going to be so yeah. much of that. It's like a book written by a fucking Tony Soprano's mother. <laughs>
these blacks. Yeah, I mean, fuck me. This is straight up People's Republic oh, on yeah. steroids. Yeah, man. yeah. Another man walked into my apartment. He was a Caucasian, though with an unusually dark complexion. <laughs> the blacks greeted him deferentially and reported the negative result of their search. No guns here, Mr. Trepper. Trepper ran his finger down the list of names and apartment numbers on his clipboard until he came to mine. This is a bad one. He has a racist record, been cited by the council twice, and he owned eight firearms which were never turned in. So he's supposed to be the hero. He's yeah. my hero. Oh, he has a record of racial <laughs> criminality. And he's armed to the team. Yeah, yeah. Trevor opened his attaché case and took out a small black object about the size of a pack of cigarettes, which was attached by a long cord to an electronic instrument in the case. As he swept over the left side of the kitchen door frame, the rumble jumped to a piercing shriek. It took the Negro substantially less than two minutes after that to find my gun. This is like Tony Soprano's mum co-writing a book with H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> Yeah. I can't see it staying this subdued and tame no. throughout. This is gonna get bad, I think. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. So yeah, we'll we will have to genuinely just see how we're gonna have to this, yeah, make a decision as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. I was handcuffed without further ado and led outside. Altogether four of us were arrested in my apartment building. Mr. Trevor and some of his deputies had more searches to carry out, but three large blacks with baseball bats and knives were left to guard us in front of the apartment building. The four of us were forced to sit on the cold sidewalk in various states of undress for more than an hour until a police van finally came for us. Who are these black guys? Yes, yeah, they're, they're like, just... Where, yeah. Is there actually ever going to be an explanation? Like, they just have like kitchen knives and baseball bats, <laughs> yeah. but they're not, at, they're like, not they're even armed. They don't even have, like, batons. No, like, it's they're just, not even pretending that they're yeah. police. Green armbands like, and, what? and a kitchen knife. Yeah, like what the fuck? And especially given that it's like, this is you guys though. Obviously there wouldn't be black people yeah. and you'd probably have guns rather than knives yeah. and bats. But this is you, this yeah. is what you want. Oh well the guy in charge, he was a Caucasian. But he was a bit yeah, dark, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like he was suspicious yeah, of the Caucasian, yeah. and it's like the racial makeup of the perpetrators, that's the issue. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. None of the, what they're actually doing is actually the problem, because of course, I guarantee you we will see scenes later on where Turner is yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. and worse. Doing far worse, yeah. yeah. To, to black people and But Jewish it'll be people. very heroic. But yeah, exactly, because he's killing yeah. the right people, and they should be exterminated. And this is exactly what you see in People's Republic. Yeah, it's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. It is, yeah, of course it is, yeah. Dude, <laughs> we're in at the deep end here, folks. One man stopped to ask what it was all about. One of our guards brusquely explained that we were all under arrest for possessing illegal weapons. Then the black pointed to me and said, and that one's a racist. Still shaking his head, the man moved on. Imagine that, eh? Imagine yeah. disapproving yeah. of an armed racist <laughs> living in your building. Herb Jones, who used to belong to the organisation and was one of the most outspoken of the they'll never get my gun people before the Cohen Act, walked by quickly with his eyes averted. At first, the news media tried hard to work up enough public sentiment against us so that the arrest would stick. The fact that there weren't enough jail cells in the country to hold us all could be remedied by herding us into barbed wire enclosures outdoors until new prison facilities could be readied, the newspapers suggested. In freezing weather. Like... Yeah. Re do you, really? Yeah. Really? The allusions to the Nazis. And then obviously, especially now, with like, I'm talking about like Spencer and Dewey yes. and the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. lineage all the way to the modern Republicans and Trump right now. And the Democrats yeah. right now, when it yeah. comes to the fucking borders, uh, the borders and the, yeah. ICE facilities, yeah. the concentration camps for refugees, the barges and the fucking freezing cold yeah. tents and fenced in, getting all kinds of fucking diseases. Yeah. And he's pissing and moaning. Yeah. <laughs> the Jewish communist yeah. deputised blacks with knives in their belts who run the world. Yeah, I mean, this is immediately Fuck. every bit as unhinged, disjointed, yeah. fucking completely absurd yeah. as anything yeah. we've read before. There's the, like, there's nothing so far, there's nothing special yeah. about this other than perhaps the balls out nature of the vicious racism. Yeah, yeah. Schlichter was like, you know, oh, the fake police. Yes. And they had yeah. gang tattoos. Yeah. And we know exactly we know what, what it that means, means. But he didn't call he didn't blacks. Call them, yeah, and he wasn't saying that they were like Caucasian. 
but yeah. not enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas yeah. he will actually just say it. And yeah. they've all done this. They've all done this. I still remember the Washington Post headline the next day. Fascist, racist, conspiracy smashed, illegal weapons seized. But not even the brainwashed American public could fully accept the idea that nearly a million of their fellow citizens had been engaged in a secret armed conspiracy. As more and more... Sorry, he did... Like, he just mentioned that that fellow was like a vocal member of the organisation mm. that they keep mentioning. They are! They are! Yeah, 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 yeah. Conspiracy, yeah, right? Are, yeah. Like, there is a conspiracy. Because <laughs> there isn't a Jewish black conspiracy that he's... Yeah, 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 yeah. But there, but there is, but there yeah, is yeah. a conspiracy of right-wing people. Yeah. And, and this book is, is part of that conspiracy. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. This book inspired yeah. the fucking terrorist attack. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking Oh, you fucking dumb, dead cunt. <laughs> As more and more details of the raids leaked out, public restlessness grew. One of the details which bothered people was that the raiders had, for the most part, exempted black neighbourhoods from the searches. <laughs> The explanation given at first for this was that since racists were the ones primarily suspected of harbouring firearms, there was relatively little need to search black homes. The peculiar logic of this explanation broke down when it turned out that a number of persons who could hardly be considered either racists or fascists had been caught up in the raids. Among them were two prominent liberal newspaper colonists who had earlier been in the forefront of the anti-gun crusade. <laughs> yeah, I've never ever heard of a prominent liberal columnist secretly being racist. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would never a prominent that. liberal columnist yeah. just couldn't actually turn out to be a fascist or a racist. No, it's no. literally no. never happened. Because <laughs> that's as left as it gets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, liberal yeah, yeah. columnist. Seeing Bill Maher is <laughs> yeah. as leftist as it gets. The list of persons to be... Oh, he's just going to constantly say persons instead of people. <laughs> he's going to do it. He's never going to say people. He's going to say persons. Yeah. The list of persons to be raided, it turns out had been compiled primarily from firearm sales records which all gun dealers had been required to keep like this is him now having a jab at fucking yeah. sales records when william luther pierce becomes president of nazi america mm. anyone will be free to yeah, yeah. whatever firearm they choose <laughs> yeah. and there'll be no restrictions placed on any of that right mm -hmm. yeah Sure thing. Anyway, the whole thing soon became so embarrassing and so unwieldy that most of the arrestees were turned loose again within a week. The media kept yelling for prosecutions for a while, but the issue was gradually allowed to die. Actually, the system had bungled the affair rather badly. <laughs> I love how it's supposed to be from the perspective of a yeah. grassroots yeah, rank exactly. and file yeah. electrician yeah. or whatever he's supposed to yeah. be. And yet he talks like William. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was expecting yeah, it. It's not convincing yeah, at yeah. all. Again, just another one of these like wish fulfillment things. Yeah. For a few days we were all more frightened and glad to <laughs> Yeah, well it's happened already, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Fucking nonsense. Yeah. For a few days we were all more frightened and glad to be free than anything else. Very frightened to be free. Yeah. Frightened and glad. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people in the organisation dropped out right then and there. Now that the patriotic element in the population had been disarmed, they argued we were all at the mercy of the system and had to be much more careful. I love this idea as well. It's like, yeah, because patriotism isn't just part of the system, is it? <laughs> Being a patriot, certainly the way these fuckers talk about it, yeah. literally just means blindly supporting the system and yeah. never questioning no, it. Yeah, it's a really radical political yeah. position. <laughs> Hatred of the Jews. Well, yeah, 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 in this case, yeah, yeah. 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 Hatred of Jewish people. Oh yeah, no, the powers that be will be really scared to hear you talking like that. Yeah. <laughs> The more militant members, on the other hand, were for digging up our weapons caches and unleashing a program of terror against the system immediately. I wasn't quite sure with that one. Yeah. Pogrom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, you're always tripping over yeah, yeah. trying to say pogrom. <laughs> Welcome to today's pogrom. Uh, I mean, pogrom. Sorry, excuse me. The more militant members, on the other hand, were for digging up our weapons caches and unleashing a program of terror against the system immediately, carrying out executions of federal. <laughs> judges, newspaper editors, legislators, <laughs> and other system figures. <laughs> just immediately, there's no... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were on, like, page two at this yeah. point, and he's already just like... So anyway, I started black. <laughs> 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 like, like I don't know if they wanted money mm -hmm. or they wanted something more sexual. Wow. But it's a lucky thing, I had my pieces. Your, your pieces? My guns. Oh. 
Uh, anyway, I started blasting. Bang! Wow. Bang! Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang! Try to shoot them in the back. But I don't want so good either. Anyway, you guys all think I'm a hero, and I'll accept that responsibility. The time was ripe for such action, they felt, because in the wake of the gun raids, we could win public sympathy for such a campaign against <laughs> tyranny. <laughs> Fascinating fucking newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> we could certainly have killed a number of the creatures responsible for America's ills, but I believe we would have lost in the long run. Interesting choice of words. Yes. There. For one thing, the organization just wasn't well disciplined enough for waging terror against the system. There were too many cowards and blabbermouths among us. <laughs> Informers, fools, weaklings, and irresponsible. Jerks would have been our undoing. <laughs> wow, so it's like, no, 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 we shouldn't just start killing judges and newspaper editors. First, we have to <laughs> kill our own. <laughs> yeah. First, we have we to kill each other. For a second thing, as soon as the public had been reassured by the media that the government was cracking down only on the racist, fascist, and other anti social elements who had kept illegal weapons, most relaxed again and went back to their TV and funny pages. <laughs> TV and funny <laughs> papers. <laughs> Can you tell that this guy was born in the fucking? <laughs> oh dear me. See in the funny paper. I do love how ill-fitting his voice yeah. is for this alleged character yeah. that he's supposed to be writing from. As we began to realise this, we were more discouraged than ever. We had based all our plans, in fact the whole rationale of the organization, on the assumption that Americans were inherently opposed to tyranny. <laughs> Why on earth would a fascist group do yeah, anything like it, that? Exactly. <laughs> You're a Nazi. <laughs> you are not opposed to tyranny. Why would you even say it? He's See, strongest advocate. He's still doing it. He's still he is doing, doing it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that this book would be different yeah. in that he wouldn't do no. exactly that, but no, he is. He's, he's just doing it. Yeah. He's still, he's he's still, still won't doesn't have the balls no. to just say what he believes. No. This is what I was saying yeah. when, when he was yeah. being called a neo-Nazi. Because he was like, oh, I'm not just following Hitler. I'm not just copying him. I'm my own thing. It's like, see, you won't yeah. even just accept what you yeah. are. This is just bullshit. Yeah, it's um, just more bollocks. We're not out of the first chapter yet, but I think we can already confirm that, no, the mystique surrounding this book <laughs> is completely unearned. Yeah. It's, it's because it's, you know, essentially a banned book, you know? Yeah. Like, that's why it has yeah. this mystique. It's like the it's, fucking video it's nasty, the video nasty, nasty you know what I mean? It's, like, it's just kids wanting to watch this movie because yeah. it's really violent. Yeah. It's for edgy fucking teenagers, and that's mm. why pieces of shit use it as inspiration to go on their fucking killing sprees and, yeah. and blow shit up. Because they just, they were looking for anything to get their fucking mm -hmm. face on the news and to get noticed by fucking senpai <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is pathetic. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, also I do just want to get onto what the what is the organization? What the fuck is it? I guess it's the the revolutionary group, isn't oh, it? I understand yeah. that that's obvious, but what is it here? What are they? Yeah, that's a good Is point. it like yeah. the NRA or something? Yeah. Why are they called the organization? It makes it sound like some yeah, like, yeah, shadowy, shadowy yeah, CIA yeah, yeah. fucking covert ops thing. I guess what we should be calling them from now on is uh, the National Alliance. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Badly underestimated the degree to which materialism had corrupted our fellow citizens, as well as the extent to which their feelings could be manipulated by the mass media, again coming from a racist. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like he's literally writing this book in order to manipulate, manipulate people, people yeah. through mass media and pop well, culture. <laughs> to, yeah, to manipulate people through mass media into creating a system of tyranny. Yes. <laughs> Hypocrite or just cunt? Yeah, <laughs> both. And the answer is no. Dead. <laughs> the answer is dead. <laughs> as long as the government is able to keep the economy somehow gasping and wheezing along, the people can be conditioned to accept any outrage. Despite the continuing inflation and the gradually declining standard of living, most Americans are still able to keep their bellies full today, and we must simply face the fact that that's the only thing which counts with most of them. But if only they were racist. Yeah, if only that they were racist. That all those problems. Yeah. <laughs> Discouraged and uncertain as we were though, we began laying new plans for the future, but at the same time to purge the organization of the faint hearts and faint hearts. <laughs> but at the same time to purge the organization of the faint hearts and hobbyists, the talkers. 
What, you mean like you, yeah. William? <laughs> what yeah, well, should we replace them with yeah. writers? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> we also tightened up on discipline. Anyone who missed a scheduled meeting twice in a row was expelled. Anyone who failed to carry out a work assignment was expelled. Anyone who violated our rule against loose talk about organisational matters was expelled. Anyone who didn't call me Dr. Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I'd wanted to give it all up and join the TV and funnies crowd, I couldn't. I could make no plans for a normal civilian future, never knowing when I might be prosecuted under the Cohen Act. The constitutional guarantee of a speedy trial, of course, had been reinterpreted by the courts until it means no more than our constitutional guarantee of the right to keep and bear arms. What? <laughs> I got lost somewhere there. Yeah, so did I. Don't read really it. Yeah, no, I don't care. <laughs> so I... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, it's this is this is identical to everything. <laughs> this is just all of the same set where it's yeah. like sentence structure that doesn't make sense, using words in a way where it's like, no, don't say it that way because yeah. it's just confusing. Just so I, and I know this also applies to George and Catherine and Henry, threw myself without reservation into work for the organization and made only plans for the future of the organization. My private life had ceased to matter. That was Mr. Pierce there justifying his own abandonment of his children. Just as yeah, I of course, inside. yeah, yeah, yeah. My private life, my yeah. personal life doesn't matter. I need to devote myself to the organisation. And if that means abandoning my own children, mm. I guess that's what any red-blooded alpha male <laughs> has to do, right? <laughs> Abandon my own children and marry a Hungarian woman <laughs> in a magazine. <laughs> What? Early last year we began putting a number of new members, unknown to the political police, into police agencies and various quasi-official <laughs> organisations, <laughs> such as the Human Relations <laughs> Councils. Holy shit. We were surprised at the ease with which we were able to set up and operate this network. We never would have gotten away with it back in the days of J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> That's because he was doing it to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that as well. Like, we were really shocked at the ease with yeah. which we had infiltrating the police force with Nazis. Yeah. Why? Yeah, why yeah, yeah. why were so you shocked? You didn't infiltrate them. No. You weren't sneaking so you them in. You simply joined. They them. knew who you yeah. were yeah. when you joined, and yeah. that's why they yeah. let you I'm join. I'm really happy for you to join. <laughs> It is ironic that while the organisation has always warned the public against the dangers of racial integration of our police, this has now turned out to be a blessing in disguise for us. The Equal Opportunity Boys have really done a wonderful wrecking job on the FBI and other <laughs> investigative agencies, and their efficiency is way down as a result. He's actually saying the woke FBI, the woke CIA. <laughs> Yeah, Holy shit. shit! Holy fuck! Oh my god! It's four a.m. Got to get some sleep. <laughs> fuck me! End of chapter. This is exactly like Schlichter. Yeah, it is. Like yeah, the weird it's, kind yeah. of dissonance between who the character is supposed to be and the way that they talk. Yeah, yeah. Like that. The like obviously incredibly bad world building, mm. so inorganic and incoherent. Wow! I find it very hard to believe Kurt Schlichter has not read the turn. God, could you imagine William Luther Pierce doing stand-up? <laughs> Chapter 2. September 18th, 1991. These last two days have really been a comedy of errors, and today the comedy nearly became a tragedy. And the others... <laughs> Every time I read a line like that, I just imagine the, the, the wife of his fucking nonce mate or yeah. whoever it was telling him to his face, yeah, it's really poorly it's written, really it's badly terrible, written, yeah. it's fucking... It's shit, mate. Yeah. It's fucking maybe shit, mate. Maybe you should give it another yeah. go. Yeah, maybe you should fuck off. Money is our main problem now. We thought to stock this place with food, medicine, tools, spare clothing, masks, even a bicycle. But we forgot about cash. A bicycle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> His clansman <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two days ago when the word came that they were starting the arrests again we had no chance to withdraw money from the bank. It was too early in the morning. <laughs> now our accounts are surely frozen. So we have only the cash that was in our pockets at the time. A little over seventy dollars altogether. Note to reader, the dollar was the basic mon oh my god. <laughs> The dollar was the basic monetary unit in the United States in the old era. In 1991, two dollars would buy a half kilo loaf of bread or about a quarter of a kilo of sugar. And no transportation except for the bicycle. <laughs> <All four of them. laughs> it's, it's a four-round bike. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. 
amazing. Yeah. Even if we had kept a car, we would have had a problem trying to get fuel for it, since our gasoline ration cards are magnetically coded with our social security numbers. When we stuck them into the computer at a filling station, they would instantaneously tell the feds monitoring the central computer where we were. Yesterday, George, who is our contact with Unit 9, took the bicycle and pedaled over to talk to them about the situation. I love their way of like, riding bicycles, like the Italian partisans yeah. and something, you know, like the French Resistance. Yeah. And like, fuck off, yeah. bro. Yeah. Fuck off. Always got to plug themselves in other Again, people's Yeah, way. yeah, they've got to ride a bicycle because they've got to be like the French resistance or the Italian communist yeah. partisans. Because, let's be honest, they're cool. They're the heroes. They're the heroes. They were actually the fascists, the yeah. they're the ones that were doing the raids, yeah. mate. They had the checkpoints and yeah. the tanks. Yeah, because well, they're the clubs. What happened to yeah, them? What happened to them? Where, how are they doing now? Yeah. They're a little better off than we are, but not much. The six of them have about $400, but they're crowded into a hole in the wall, which is even less satisfactory than ours. According to George, <laughs> they do have four automobiles. <laughs> <laughs> Outdated yeah, it's amazing, it's, it's so amazing. Funny. It's like you're almost, you feel like you're reading in black and white. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They do have four automobiles and a fair size store of fuel. Oh, it's <laughs> like that's how it should be yeah. read, isn't yeah. it? The network will be established in 10 days, but until then, we are on our own. Furthermore, when our unit joins the network, it is expected to have already solved its supply problems and be ready to go into action in concert with the other units. I, I was going to say, it'd be very strange for like a group of militant fascists to start a network where they all help each other <laughs> by <laughs> donating goods and sharing services to each other and sharing supplies. It's like, yeah, no, that wouldn't happen yeah. with you cunts, would yeah. it? I bring my skills to the table yeah. and you bring yours yeah. and we exchange yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> then what do we call that, Mr. Pierce? <laughs> don't ask him, he don't yeah, know. Don't ask him, he's fucking <laughs> dead. Yeah. Uh, we all just come together yeah. Yeah. for a shared goal. Yeah. Again, I do just feel as well at this point it would probably be helpful if we had any idea of what the organisation is. Yeah. You're going to tell us about the currency value and <laughs> like the exchange rates and you're not yeah. going to tell us what the fuck the organisation even is. Well, no, the more nebulous the better. You've yeah. got to remember as well, like yeah. this is not a novel, this is a recruitment yeah. tool. Gasoline is always available on the black market. Of course, at $10 a gallon, nearly twice what it costs at a filling station. I feel like uh, this is the exact same point in the story, like page count and everything, that Kurt Schlichter was telling us this exact same information about the fucking gas prices I and think, black yeah. market in People's Republic. I, I feel that like People's Republic is almost like a kind of reworking yeah, of like the term remake. diaries, like a remake, yeah. yeah. It's on track to just like, yeah, I think maybe Kurt Schlichter just kind of ripped off the term yeah. diaries. Yeah. My opinion of Kurt Schlichter has somehow <laughs> gotten even lower. Yeah. We stewed over our situation until this afternoon. Then, desperate not to waste any more time, we finally decided to go out and take some money. Henry and I were stuck with the chore since we couldn't afford for George to get arrested. He's the only one who knows the network code. Is that the Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> we had Catherine to do a pretty good makeup job on us first. No, no, oh no! My god, oh 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 Unconfirmed. <laughs> Unconfirmed <Yeah>. reports. <laughs> Tactical black paint. Oh, please don't you let us down, Percy boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was honestly I was sitting here thinking, is this just gonna be dreary from start to finish? But if he can pull out things like this from his fucking oil drum. <laughs> fingers crossed. We had Catherine do a pretty good makeup job on us first. She's into amateur theatre and had the equipment and know-how to really change a person's appearance. <laughs> My inclination was just to walk into the first liquor store we came to, knock the manager on his head with a brick and scoop <laughs> Road not brick. a bat or a club <laughs> or a hammer or, or anything. Anything you would conceivably have to have. No, I think it would just 
find a street brick somewhere. <laughs> Oh, fuck me. <laughs> My inclination was to just walk into the first liquor store we came to, knock the manager on the head with a brick, mm. and scoop up the money from the cash <laughs> register. Henry wouldn't go along with that, though. He said we couldn't use means which contradicted our ends. If we began preying on the public to support ourselves, we will be viewed as a gang of common criminals, regardless of how lofty our aims are. Nazism. Yep. Nazism. Dare we ruin the reputation yeah. of racism? <laughs> <laughs> Use means which contradict our ends. Your ends is the genocide external. of the majority of the human race. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, this is getting good now. Mm. This is genuinely mm. getting good now. Yeah, I've got to be honest, I don't think we've made a mistake reading really this. I think we've made a mistake. Mistake was his in fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This other one that came up just to fend this off. Have you ever read Mein Kampf? Um, yeah, a couple times, I guess. A couple times? Are there Easter eggs in there you didn't get the first time? <laughs>